Welcome back, I'm Linda Kincaid. I want to turn to China now on a story that's causing a lot of heated debate. Two strangers disciplined a child mid-flight after she wouldn't stop crying. The two women locked themselves inside the plane's restroom with the toddler, saying they wouldn't let her out until she calmed down. And as the girl stopped crying, the women filming the video picked her up and told her, if you make any noise again, we'll come back here. The twist, the child's grandmother apparently gave them permission. One of the women later posted that video online, sparking backlash over how to handle tantrums in public. Well, Diane Gottsman is an etiquette expert and the owner of the Protocol School of Texas. She joins us now for more on travel etiquette and parenting. Good to have you with us, Diane. Thank you for having me. Uh, so this is kind of a horrifying story. You've got these two random strangers and they took it upon themselves to what they described as educate a one-year-old child by taking that child away from its grandparents into a bathroom on a plane, locking the door and waiting until that child stopped crying. Um, and then police obviously got involved when the, when the plane landed, uh, the airlines investigating. What's your reaction? So horrific on so many different levels. So, you know, that is a definite no whether even if the family member the grandmother said it was all right it's not all right this child was with strangers locked in a bathroom it's 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 all very obvious that there is some major major problems with this situation so but there are things that we can do as as parents and as passengers to make the flight more pleasant that is the extreme that is absolutely not not appropriate yeah, exactly. Uh, no one obviously wants to listen to a toddler having a meltdown on a plane. Trust me, I have three little kids. They've all had meltdowns on planes. Uh, but it, this flight that we're talking about was less than three hours, two hours and 45 minutes. And apparently the little girl was taking, was crying upon takeoff, which can happen with toddlers. They're, the pressure on their ears can cause pain, especially if they've got a, an ear infection. Uh, what's your advice yes. for families traveling with young kids? So I think there are a few things that we can do. You know, there's no guarantees. And I, too, am a, a mom of three, so we've experienced it as parents. But there are some things that we can do. And one of them is choose your flight as wisely as possible, meaning, you know, every child is different, and especially if you have multiple children. But if you know mornings are better, they are more engaged, uh, they are happier then as opposed to afternoons when they get a little cranky. So every, every situation is going to be different in terms of what flight you choose. But pick a good seat if you can. So the closer up front you can sit, the better, because easy in easy out. And I'm not talking about first class. I'm just talking about maybe logging on early to try and get a better seat. And of course, you can board early. But it's really not necessary to get on that plane and start apologizing to everyone. You know, we, we as humans, hopefully understand and we feel some compassion. And you know, there are people who like to give out goodie bags and earplugs and all of that is great, but it costs money. Not everybody has that. So I think for parents, it's it's important to be kind to yourself and understand that you might have to ask for help. You might be drinking juice and you might have to use your neighbor's tray table if they don't mind while you're holding your, your baby. So, and I think that it's important to keep them busy, you know, give them a little, if they're old enough to understand, bring a little backpack with all new activities, you know, new little things that are going to keep their attention. Plus, I think it's important to, to, to talk to your child, you know, coddle your child, coo with your child. You know, this is what we do naturally. But what I'm saying is to just give yourself some grace because truly this was an exception. And we do know that there are other passengers that roll their eyes when moms and dads walk by. But I say, let's not do that. Let's let's try and smile and understand as these parents walk by with their with their toddler and their baby in tow. And I think to some extent, parents and grandparents need to give themselves some grace. I, I, there was an interesting report that came out this week. Um, the U.S. Surgeon General uh, just declared parental stress a critical public health issue. And I just want to bring up a graphic, uh, a statement from the report. He wrote, mothers and fathers now work many more hours than in 1985, but also spend many more hours every week on primary childcare. And that doesn't count their total time with, spent with their children. Demands from both work and childcare giving have come at the cost of quality time with one's partner, sleep and parental leisure time. 
Now, we know in the case of this one-year-old child who was traveling with the grandparents, uh, they landed in Shanghai. The dad was there when they landed and uh, apparently quite stressed, as you would imagine. Uh, surely these days, uh, uh, parents need to give themselves some grace as well, right? Absolutely. I think that it's very important to not over criticize ourselves. We can't take it upon ourselves. We're not parents are not miracle workers. And I think in this case, we have to understand a, a child of any age can only act up to their age. A one-year-old child cannot self-soothe. They cannot, they cannot rationalize. And these are adults that are taking uh, the, the responsibility to, to, to be punitive with this child. So I think the burden really lies on what those adults did to this young child. You know, babies cry. Now, we don't, I know it's uncomfortable if we're next to them, but you know, maybe that's why we should, as passengers, pack smart. We have noise canceling earbuds. We have a, a nice shawl, you know, that, that we can wrap around our, our shoulders and use as a pillow and, um, you know, kind of self-soothe ourselves as passengers. So I do think it's important for everybody just to, to take a breath. You know, the, the, the baby may have to, have a diaper change on the flight. And that's something else. You know, uh, as parents, we want to bring the Ziploc bags that are airtight. But as a passenger, that you see a, a mom or dad struggling, you know, do what you can uh, when you can to, to help out. And, and when all else fails, or not even before anything fails, ask the flight attendant for help. If you're not quite sure where to change a baby or what you should do, um, you know, in terms of having to go to the, the laboratory and then you've got your baby, there, there's people that, that can help when you're on that flight. And, and speaking of just general flight etiquette, we've covered so many uh, problems from people putting their, their feet on a seat to, to popping on the, uh, on the flight intoxicated. Uh, we know the CEO of Ryanair just this week said uh, he wants to limit the amount of drinks that people can have before they get on a plane. Just generally speaking, what is the etiquette of plane travel? So I think that we need to plan in advance. We know that there is going to be some um, some delays, probably some issues, not, not hopefully not critical issues, but you know we may not get the seats we want. Somebody may even ask us to change seats. And you can say politely, no, thank you. You know, if, if somebody asks you to change to trade seats with them, um, if you want to, that's fine, but it's not necessary. I think that it's just important to be respectful to each other. You know, wait your line when you're wait, wait your turn when you're deplaning. So don't push forward and try and get out just because you don't have any bags. Make sure that your bin space is close to where you're sitting when possible so you're not taking up some other person's space then they have to go backwards it's common courtesy always is is best for all of us because it makes everything flow easier all right diane gotsman owner of the protocol school of texas and etiquette expert good to have you with us thank you thank you